all of the practices were washed out uh, today, so we really don't know how good the car is. That being said, I'm kind of glad that they did. On occasion, I like that. On occasion, I, I like going into into Sunday's race blind. It goes to make it a little bit different, and it adds a different level of excitement because all of these drivers are going to have to be tweaking on their cars during the race to get them where they want, and so there's going to be a lot of comers and goers, as they say, on Sunday. Uh, I'm sure NASCAR will put in a... Uh, mandatory caution at some point uh, during the beginning of the race, and I, I I like that too because you know that hey, even if Dale Jr.'s car is junk at the start of the race, that there's all in all likelihood we'll we'll get to that first caution before having to worry about going a lap down. I'm a big fan of Texas. I like the the um, I like these size tracks. Uh, Dale Jr. has a good uh, track record at these types of uh, tracks. I know people call them cookie cutter, but uh, to me, these are the, these are my favorite types of races to watch. I like the strategy, how it plays out. Um, I like the speed. Uh, I like to play it on the NASCAR um, 15 uh, Xbox game. It's a fun one to play. It's a lot like Charlotte. Uh, this track is a lot. It's a. It's, it really is a lot like a. Uh, it, it, it feels a lot like Charlotte. Just to, as a matter of fact, it's. It's if you stripped away, like the identifiers, on the. Um, if you stripped away the identifiers on the track and just raced on the racetrack, I think a lot of people would have a hard time even telling the difference between Charlotte and uh, and Texas Motor Speedway. So. In terms of a prediction for Sunday's race for the podcast, um, that's kind of a. I'll go top ten. I know it's easy, but I really don't know how the car is. Uh, I think they've been running. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll take that back. I'll take that back. That's not good. I'm not going to cheat you out of it. That's a lazy way to do it, right? A good um, analyst. I'm not claiming. I'm not really an analyst, but I play one during this podcast. A uh, a good analyst would still analyze Dale Jr. and be able to come up with something more than just throwing a dart. Um, up against uh, the wall. So um, I'll go with top five. And the reason I'll go with top five is that Dale Jr. seems to have a lot of confidence. He's won at Texas before. He qualified better. He's starting in the top ten. I think there are there is a little bit of momentum behind the team and a lack of pressure because they're not in the chase compared to some of the other guys that are um, around him that are still in the chase and going to be fighting for positions. So I'll say the Dale Jr. walks out of Texas with a uh, with the top five. But we really won't know until the green flag drops tomorrow how the car is, and that should be exciting. I will say this. The, um, the paint scheme's grown on me. This is probably my least favorite paint scheme. I like the design. I just don't like the color blue. I know. I'm weird like that. I liked the first version of the Kelly Blue Book where it was more white and with gold and blue trim and less blue on the car. I think he's only run this paint scheme at um, Atlanta this year. Uh, and that that particular color of blue on the car just doesn't, eh, it's just okay. Um, however, the, the paint scheme has grown on me. I hope that they update it for next year if he runs this paint scheme again. I like the way the pinstriping is on it. I think the, the design is really cool. Um, it was done sort of in the same vein as last year's National Guard car, which I know a lot of people didn't like with the red, white, and blue and the stripes, but I really like that. Um, be that as it may, it doesn't make the car go. No, I take that back. You know, I would say it doesn't make the car go faster, but Dale Jr. cares about those paint schemes. If you've ever watched his, um, if you've ever watched his DVD of shifting gears, uh, which is a great, um, set, by the way, it's a great set of shows, uh, to a two disc DVD set. If you've ever watched that before, you know, that when he went to Hendrick Motorsports, he was very specific about how he wanted the cars to look. And he says, you know, he wants to walk up to the car and walk into a walk into a car that you know he likes how it looks. He says some guys don't care about the paint schemes, but he cares about the paint schemes and he wants to be racing a badass looking car. So maybe it does make the car go faster. You know, in as much as when you go and wash your car, it feels like the car drives better when it's clean. All right, so that's it. We'll be we keep it short and sweet this week, just because there was no practice and not a whole lot to analyze, and he hasn't been saying much on Twitter. I've got the Xfinity race on pause. I'm gonna go watch it while I wait for this to uh, finish uploading, and by then you'll be listening to it because if you're listening to it, you've uploaded it. Uh, you've uploaded it. So thanks for checking the podcast out, and uh, we'll go through the usual rigmarole. If you haven't subscribed to my podcast on iTunes, 
please do. It would be much appreciated. Drop me a rating um, and a comment. I, I'd like to move up my podcast in the ranking on iTunes, and the only way that happens is if you rate the podcast or you leave a comment. Uh, you can always email me any questions, a justice, and the number is 1041, justice1041 at gmail.com. Uh, follow me on the Twitter at John Justice, and I'll be back next week with the preview of Phoenix, a race that hopefully I get a ticket to and that I will personally be at. So uh, I hope it's a great race tomorrow. I hope the rain stays away. I hope this Xfinity race is good. I'm looking forward to going and watching it, and I have a bottle of wine with my name on it because that's how I roll. So until we talk uh, next week, thanks again for downloading the podcast, and um, you know what? Go Junior. My nerd world. And finally, one of the most unusual pre-race prayers you will ever hear. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for all your blessings. You said in all things give thanks. So we want to thank you tonight for these mighty machines that you've brought before us. Thank you for the Dodges and the Toyotas. Thank you for the Fords. And most of all, we thank you for Ralph and Yates Parker to give us the power that we see before us tonight. My nerd world.